numbers. They transmogrified breathing, eating, shitting, connected bison into numbers. That's what happens when a being becomes a commodity. 20 to 60 million bison ranged North America before colonial contact. Surveyors and homestead inspectors came looking for a home for the government's newly acquired bison. What they saw was land that had no value because it could not be settled or farmed. It was worthless, but maybe it could be made useful. This place, southwest of Wainwright, Alberta, became Buffalo National Park in 1908, reducing the bison's lives to numbers. In 1888, there were 103 wild plains bison in North America. The land and the bison had sustained one another. The bison compacted the arid ground, helping it hold on to precious moisture. Cows and bulls felt their way across the grassland, stems and blades tickling their nostrils as soil stirred up by a roving muzzle and probing tongue was inhaled. By 1912, 748 bison had arrived at Buffalo National Park from Michelle Pablo's herd. There was an intimate interconnection between the bison and the thousands of microbes, fungi, bacteria, and protozoa populating each square centimeter of forage. These microscopic beings had the enzymes to break down cellulose in the grasses the bison eats. Neither being could live without this symbiotic relationship. The government wanted quick and exponential growth. By 1922, 6,780 bison were sharing the park's limited resources with large deer, moose, and elk populations. The land strained under the pressure of all these mouths and bodies. Reciprocity and movement had co-evolved over centuries, enabling the dunes and desert-like conditions of the hills to sustain vast herds over the winter months. Over 19,141 bison were slaughtered over the park's 30-year existence. With Canada's involvement in World War II looming, the park was declared a failure. On December 30th, 1939, the last bison were shot. Untold numbers of deer, moose, and elk followed them to the abattoir. Just numbers. <laughs>